Yeah, okay, we're finishing up a, uh, what could have been four, but has been cut to three uh, part uh, day functionally around uh, Lake Champlain here in lovely uh, northern Vermont. Just as a little bit of a backstory. Actually, hold that thought because we're going to go down to the water. I can give that spiel again. I didn't really do it in the last video. Kind of just talked about the limestone cliffs that were over there. But right in front of us here, we have something that you might be surprised to find out even grows in New England. Uh, so sit down for a second. This is interesting. This is, this, is, this is a huge commercially important family. And to my knowledge, though we get other species, including other species in this genus around the United States, this is the only one that is effectively uh, native to New England and, and somewhat abundant. What we got in front of us right here is a small tree in the family Rutaceae. This is the citrus family. And yes, this is native to New England. This is a native citrus and indeed I kind of poked around on the thing uh, smelled it smells like citrus took a little nibble of the fruits right there we'll get into that in a second I'll explain what's going on but this is Xanthoxylum americanum this is the common prickly ash this is if you're detecting a theme watching these last few videos a very abundant species in the Midwest that is only somewhat common here in the far western reaches of New England as you get up into the Champlain area, as you get up into these lowlands, this, this wide valley that we find ourselves in right now. Indeed, though we are far north, we are only about 100, maybe 150 feet above sea level here. Uh, we're actually on an island right now in the middle of Lake Champlain. And um, yeah, though you are... Um, High in elevation, you're, you're low, very, very low in altitude here. Even for New England, you are low in altitude. So it's actually really warm where we are right now. Probably about 10, 15 degrees colder than where we were this morning, which is, you know, 1,200 feet up and the Green Mountains to the, to the east of here. So now let's take a look at this plant, all right? So this is Xanthoxylum americanum. This is the common prickly ash. Those are the fruits right there. And if you've ever had a nice Szechuan dish, yes, Xanthoxylum is the genus of Szechuan peppercorns. They also go by the name prickly ash because he's got these really nasty spines up and down the branches. Rutaceae, the citrus family, is frequently, you know, going to have pinnate or very in leaves of interesting construction. Lime leaves look very interesting. You crush the leaves up here. They exude a wonderful citrus scent. I popped one of those prickly ash fruits in my mouth. I spit it out just to be safe, even though I'm pretty sure that these are, I, I mean, I know that this is safe for consumption in moderation. It can upset your stomach if you have sense of digestion because they are spicy. Now there's no capsaicin in here. It's a different set of chemicals. I bit into it. It tasted just like orange. Uh, then a little bit of spice, and now it's got that numbing agent that you'd expect from Szechuan peppercorn. Now, what species is the commercially available Szechuan peppercorn? It's a trick question. They use a whole bunch of different ones in China, and I believe that this species here, Xanthoxum americanum, is at least somewhat utilized by uh, people as a pepper alternative, as a spice. I mean, to me, it tastes the exact same. This is a little bit less intense because these are still somewhat fresh. And I mean, I wish I had the flowers on it to show you because citrus flowers are beautiful. But those are the fruits. So it's a little red, uh, I'm sorry, a little um, black capsule enclosing. Ow, I'm getting stabbed on one that's further down, a dead branch of one. Let me actually just pick one of these off real quick. Get yeah, my mouth is, they, they, they have a really fun numbing texture that if I didn't know any better would freak me the hell out. Again, don't go around grabbing stuff off of trees. Again, I, I chewed a tiny little piece of one and spit it right back out. So these are the fruits. Yes, those are citrus, citrus fruits. They are going to have what are referred to as pellucid oil glands, which if you've ever squeezed a lemon or a lime peel or an orange peel, all those citrus oils come out. Oh, my hands now smell amazing. So yeah, you wouldn't eat these as like a, as like a fruit. You know, prickly ash is consumed as a spice. And, and even then, in moderation, it is potent when it is dried out. I'm not sure how much this gets utilized. If it's like a sumac, it's kind of like a sumac situation where, yeah, you know, there's some are better than others, but they're all technically fine. I don't think that there are any. I'll put a massive disclaimer here because frutacea, you don't think of New England, you don't think citrus fruit. I don't believe with a very, very large asterisk, there are any poisonous, toxic citrus family members. 
But in any case, this is just a really cool tree doing some cool chemistry. I'll put the name of the compounds that cause that numbing sensation. You've got all the other interesting citrus chemistry. Um, I mean, th this whole area is obviously pretty massively populated by deer. You don't see them munching on this because they probably have a pretty strong dislike of uh, those oils that the leaves and the fruits exude and the flowers on citrus i mean people keep lemon people grow lemons up here i don't know if you can do limes but you can do hearty lemons up here and the flowers on them smell amazing so i can only imagine this is much in the same look like they top out at about 15 feet um again these are known from counties east of here but it's pretty sporadic until you get into you know the lake champlain uh, valley and then these start becoming rather common. I've seen some pins around Boston, but I'm guessing these probably get planted ornamentally. I'll put a picture of what the flowers look like because they're attractive, you know, well-behaved shrubs from the look of it. They have a really nice habit to them. Um, in any case, we'll see what else is else on this island. We had a hell of a time tracking down Corcus mulembergii at the last spot we were at. Now we're going to go look for another kind of um, rare New England oak, but very common out in the Midwest if you're detecting that theme. Um, this one's not explicitly a limestone lover, but it definitely has a preference for it. We're going to see if we can find a uh, Quercus macrocarpa and a couple other things. Take it easy. Oh yeah, one quick thing, that common name, prickly ash. Again, Rutaceae, this has, uh, oh geez, I don't even remember what order Rutaceae is in. Maybe even its own order, but I'm not, whatever, don't worry about that right now. Um, prickly ash, that comes from these lovely compound leaves that this thing has, but you'll note that, well, yes, it is prickly. It has alternate leaves, quite unlike an ash. God, I just keep getting myself on these things real good. So, prickly, uh, prickly pecan or prickly walnut might have been a better name for it, but prickly ash is a nice ring to it, even though no relation to ashes or walnuts for that matter. I'm just making that joke because Jiglandaceae, that whole family, you know, they have alternate leaves. Anyway, I'm losing, I'm losing steam. It's been a long day, and uh, there is a, a whiskey flight awaiting me at some point in the great city of Burlington uh, at the end of this, so we'll power through. Sorry, one, one, one other thing. You got a citrus fruit, citrus tree coming up with a thuya. I explained this in the first video I shot today, but you might not have even seen that one. Thuya occidentalis east of here is typically only found in really, really cold, almost subalpine swamps. In New Hampshire, there's a beautiful, beautiful mature thuya swamp uh, with just magnificent old the Occidentalis trees in it. Here, up in the north country of Vermont, and anywhere you get the high pH bedrock, they can grow in the forest, and they do pretty darn well. Still form through your swamps here, but um, you know, most of the time, uh, at least most of the time I've seen them, they're on these nice headlands. But yeah, there's a citrus tree, there's an Arborvitaes. I never thought I'd see the two together, but here we are. Just putting this in for documentation, this plant caught my eye. And I've got no idea what it is. It's got bilaterally symmetrical flowers in opposite leaves. Those flowers are just about on their way out. I'll see if I can figure out what this is. If it's something interesting, I'll keep this in the video and I'll put it down below in the comments. There's only a few of them. This is the biggest one. Uh, uh, the leaves are, the flowers are too far gone to really get a fragrance out of it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful plant though. We'll see. We can figure out what it is. But uh, no, I, I don't have an answer for you right this second. So maybe we'll figure it out. Yeah, that's cool. Way off in the distance there. That's Mansfield. We're staying just on the other side of that mountain there. Beautiful panorama. Looking south. Lake Champlain. We're having some trouble. We couldn't. Bur Oak is not here. And uh, the other, the Cleo Macy that I set out to find, I can't seem to find you. The good news is both are actually back the way we came. So we'll be able to check in one last time and at least, you know, make an attempt. Sorry, I was looking at something. Make an attempt to get them on video. If not, take it easy. Have a great day. But uh, maybe we'll be checking in in a minute here. Moment of Zen right there. New England Aster, Canada Goldenrod. I mean... You know what they're telling you. Fall is on its way. Imagine being stupid enough to come through here and just be like, oh, fall weeds, fall weeds. 
the sound and aroma right now of all of the life uh, happening around me. Not to get too corny, but you gotta. People are too, I, I, until you point it out to people, and I encourage you to do so, they're not gonna care or notice. Probably one of the closest things you're gonna get to an actual prairie-like habitat in New England, even though this is clearly just an abandoned agricultural field. Just again, due to the substrate. That is real nice though. You know, it really is, uh, really is freaking beautiful out there. Came all the way down here, could not find this, uh, this clammy weed. Got some Biden Cernua, and I found this, which was on my list, which I couldn't find originally. Get a nice Sagittaria. I think this is Graham the Foley. Look at these weird, uh, three, uh, kind of like three parted leaves here. That's fascinating. Uh, it looks like it's some mermaid weed down here. This is actually probably a really cool habitat to come to right time of the year. Uh, it's Pontedaria. Nice Pontedaria over there. Pontedaria cordata. But uh, yeah, that's cool. I'll take some pictures of the Sagittaria as a consolation prize. I have not seen this before. I thought I saw it um, down on the Cape. But it was actually a much more rare species, ironically. Uh, uh, Sagittaria terrestre. So we'll get this. We'll do one final, final, final sweep. Quercus macrocarpa. Ooh, the big, big frog right there. Look at this guy. Oh, where'd he go? You look good. You look healthy, my friend. Can you even see him? Probably not. He blends in really well. Oh, there he is. You look healthy, my friend. So we'll put the Sagittaria gramnifolia there. Lots of species of Sagittaria. Some of them growing out in deserts and oases. Lots of them kind of restricted to the sand plains of the East Coast. Real cool plants. So we'll take some pictures of this. We'll see if we can get that at least Quercus macrocarpa and we'll get the, we'll hightail it out of here for the day. All right, well, we're back actually to the spot where we decided not to even cut a video. Cause right behind me when I was filming, I guess was Quercus macrocarpa. And I gotta be honest, I thought they'd be bigger. These acorns are supposed to be about as big as golf balls, but they don't look like they're quite fully mature yet but you know sure enough I took a good detailed picture of the acorn I thought you know it looked a little bit like the chinkapin oak Quercus Wollenbergia but I guess I guess not it ran this through iNaturalist and it doesn't come up as anything other than uh, Quercus macrocarpa but again you know oaks are so phenotypically plastic that that's just the way that it goes sometimes so you get this weird little oak is another one like Wollenbergii much more common out in the prairie states. In fact, that is its uh, that is its specific niche. Typically, is a prairie edges, and as you can see, this one's grown quite large. I guess those leaves do look a little bit different than the uh, Quercus Muhlenbergii. It's an impressive tree, though. Some nice bark on it there, and uh, you know, I guess that's also the, the branching habit. How the dead branches kind of uh, she those aren't dead at all. I was just get sheathing bark on them, you know? I'll put up a picture of what these typically look like. But then again, you know, who, who knows? Like I said, get up close to those acorns, get good detail. Eh, I'll call it there.